Welcome everybody to the second uh, live True Talk Thursday. Uh, we are joined by some folks from NASB, uh, parent here, Catherine Camargo, and then Betty Macio. And we are going to drive this conversation with Maria and um, Atiba. So let's go ahead and jump on in. I'll let you guys introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Welcome and good evening, everyone. This is Maria Armstrong with ALAS. We're so happy to come back and um, engage in a really um, timely topic. And the purpose of the Zoomcast, we're calling it Zoomcast podcast, lo que sea, is to provide a venue or a medium to encourage and engage a conversation about the topics that are centered around education. You're, but I've got to say that, um, you know, the, the opinions, the experiences, and the various perspectives, ideas um, are going to be shared here are, are just a snapshot of what we are hearing and seeing and reading about across the country. Therefore, the views and opinions expressed tonight do not necessarily reflect that of ALAS or NAPSI. And uh, with that, I want to introduce my co-host, Atiba. Good afternoon or good evening. Uh, my name is Fadili Kotiba Wiza. I'm from the National Alliance of Black School Educators, and I am honored and proud to be part of this. This is a, these are timely discussions. We're living in some very challenging times, and it is important for our constituents groups to hear from some of the experts and some of the people who, whose opinion count. So I am happy to be joined by Betty Masia from the National, she is a board member of the National Alliance of Black School Educators, and she will speak about herself when you introduce her, Maria. Excellent. So we do want to introduce our two guests tonight. Tonight's topic is the parent perspective for back to school. Um, pretty much many of the schools have already um, been back maybe even three weeks um, now in certain areas of the country, but we want to introduce uh, Betty Macia, as, as um, Atiba was saying, who is from, um, is a, the chairperson this, uh, this particular year for NAVSI's uh, Parent Commission, and also uh, Catherine Camargo. Catherine Camargo is out of Florida, and she's a parent of a five-year-old, and she's going to be able to chat about her perspectives <laughs> with Back to School. So um, if we could just hear a little bit from each one of them. Catherine, can we start with you? Just a, just a kind of get a picture of, of who you are, where you are, and um, yeah, let's get it going. <laughs> yes, hi, good evening everyone. So I'm Catherine, I'm the mom of a five-year-old, um, Daniel, and I'm very happy to be here with all of you tonight and share a little bit about my experience as a mother. Excellent. Betty? And Good evening. Uh, my name is, again, Betty Maceo. I am in Ohio, and I am the Parent Commission Chair of the National Alliance of Black School Educators. Parent Commission on the board, and a retired school counselor, but still go back into the school and do a lot of work with students as well as parents. Can you tell us, Betty, what is the Parent Commission? What do you do? How do you help parents? Um, well, the Parent Commission, what we, what we strive to do is to make sure that parents are informed um, of information that they need as far as, um, say, the um, Every Student Succeed Act and, and different things that are coming down from the U.S. Department of Ed. Um, we also provide um, workshop trainings on various topics that parents have interest in that can help them to better help their students and advocate for their students. Um, also to, get, to help them with some things um, that they may be dealing with themselves personally, um, just to, how to be better parents and to be actively engaged in their parents, I mean, in their students' learning, because we do know that once they are actively engaged, the students do better. And when they have that connection, also trying to make a, a more comfortable connection with them between the school and, um, and the parents and the family as a unit so that again they, they have that collaboration and feel comfortable with that collaboration and that engagement where they can really work together for the betterment of their student pretty much in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> well we're super excited to have you both here and 
we just have a, you know, we, we talk about like big picture umbrella questions and then, you know, just kind of um, get your perspective, your your thoughts, your experiences, your story, you know, behind that. So I want to I wanna toss out uh, for you, you know, right now in uh, the fall of 2020, this back to school year, a little mm-hmm. different than other years in the past. And so we'd like to hear, you know, um, we'll start with Catherine. You, you know, you mentioned you have a, a kindergartner, first year in school, and I'm sure you've done a great job of getting them super excited about starting uh, kindergarten. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that's been like since COVID has hit and now that we are in the beginning of the school year, and what it's been like for your child, for you and your family? Yes, of course. Um, so Daniel was actually already going to pre-K four um, at NSU um, here in Florida. Um, he was in a program where he was actually um, in a very small classroom where they were also treating, for example, behavior pro- um, behavioral problems. So it was a very um, fortunate for me and my family. Was it was a great program just because we knew that we needed Daniel to start getting ready for kindergarten because he wasn't listening he wasn't following um was very distracted and easily distracted um so we were very excited to be able to be part of that program um at this specific school and then the whole pandemic happened so we had to pull him out I started working from home and of course all of that progress that we thought um you know we had finally Um, done and we were excited about for for the fall for kindergarten Um, we pretty much lost everything he had picked up um, from the program so um, being here 24 7 with Daniel has been um, not easy just because I have to work at the same time of course as many parents um, right now Um, I feel that it has been ups and downs especially because during the summer months we actually didn't have a very set schedule where I needed to sit him down where I could have more as a mother I had more time to organize my my work around um around you know what he his attention were at that specific time but now it has been more challenging because he has his own schedule I have my own schedule I have to jump on his Zoom meeting and then I have to jump on my um, call with the whole team in the morning. So just juggling between the two is, has, been, has been a challenge. My husband um, works um, seven days a week um, at a bakery. So he has to be, um, he's, he's not home um, during the day. So it's been like, um, it's been tough. It's been tough for him. I, I tend to say it's not fair for my son and it's not fair for me just because we are both um, not in the best conditions to do what we need to do. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been um, you know, a, a road um, that we have to try to see how we can adapt and, and start um, mentally, but also physically preparing for, for what COVID has, because I really feel it's not over yet. Eddie, what are you hearing from the parents, your, your constituent groups? What, what are the things that they find most challenging this time around as opposed to last year around this time? This time around with the, um, the, the this upcoming year? Yes, now that we school has... Um, well, pretty much the same. They, they're, um, since they have a little taste of it, they're not as, um, say, anxious and, and put out about it as they were, you know, when school ended abruptly in the spring, you know, pretty much no one knew what they were, what was going on, how long it was going to last and if they were going back in. But when once reality set in, you know, they felt like they, you know, they couldn't handle that, that role of the educator for their child. A lot of them are still feeling like that, but it's, you know, it just depends on, you know, the parent, everyone's situation is different. You know, some are more comfortable helping their student than others. Some are adapting a little better than others as far as what it is that they need to to help as well as prepared as well as understanding the um the learning management systems that the school districts are using i really feel that um the schedule it's it's the most challenging part and the reason Mm -hmm. for it is you know the school has its own schedule 
I, as a professional, have my own schedule. And I mm-hmm. have to do a hybrid schedule um, for it to work. So sometimes, for example, when they take lunch breaks at 11, 11 for me is super early. I, I'm, I'm in the peak of my productivity at work. So I can't just mm-hmm. stop and cook or start cooking at 10 to be ready for 11. So sometimes I, I just have to stop. Um, I have to stop whatever you're doing in school and have him sit around 1 p.m. around noon to have his lunch break. Um, but also so I feel the frustration in the- Daniel, for example, with the computer, because as a five-year-old, he needs to learn where he has to click to raise his hand. Right. So it's something that is so unnatural for a five-year-old. Or sometimes, most of the times, all of the kids are all muted, but then the teacher's talking and she's asking something, and then the most natural thing is to respond, and then, mom, why didn't she hear me? But wait, I already, I already said the answer. How come I don't get to say the answer? student schedules, parent schedules, just one very real dilemma families face during this time of forced remote learning. We continue our conversations with parents about back to school 2020. Listen to the Alas Nabzi podcast or vodcast on YouTube. Until the next time.